Streams live. I'm calling the finance meeting to order. I'm calling the finance meeting to order. Um, I'm calling the finance meeting to order. 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 I'm calling the fin
city law. I've been in a lot of politics in my life, but this one is just a little much. And who is it between me, council president and vice? I'm embarrassed for the great city of Flint, attorney Reed Erickson. I'm embarrassed, attorney Kendall Williams. Chia Morgan, I'm embarrassed. Do you need the rule, Madam City Attorney? I've got a one-year term ending on the second Monday. There's no council action. Now, I can anticipate some council action, but all this behind-the-scenes making deals and politics, Councilman Mays in the first ward will not stand for it. This is ridiculous. This is the voice of Councilman Mays talking far from the north end, the farthest north end of the city of Atlanta. Ninety-seven percent black populated, and we will be recognized. I've never seen such a thing, Janice. Never. I've never seen such an attempt. Now I'm gonna read rule point. I'm I'm gonna read rule point four point one. Mr. Davis, for your hearing. The president, unless otherwise directed by the council, shall appoint all committee chairs and vice chairs. That happened. That has happened to a one-year term, which should end on the second Monday of November. All of that has happened. His term don't end to the second Monday, and mine don't end. Nobody's doing it. Seen such a alleged debacle coup. A debacle coup. You ever heard of a coup, Chief? A debacle coup. Ms. Madam Clerk, please roll call. Um, okay. This meeting is being Point of order. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Miss Galloway, your second warning. You're out of order. Uh, Go ahead, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mays. Present. Mr. Davis. Present. Mr. Garrett. Present. Ms. Fields? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Mr. Winfrey? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Mr. Briggs? Present. Ms. Williams? Present. Thank you. The first agenda item, the first agenda item on the finance the committee agenda will Mr. be Mays, the any additions or changes to the Miss Galloway, you, you are out of order. order. We're trying to conduct a meeting here. The and I'm going I didn't warn you two, three times. So my position is this, we're at addition and changes to the agenda, and I'm not going to try to keep talking over Ms. Galloway, and you're out of order. Is there any changes or additions to this council agenda? We would not be silent. We are the first ward residents. We're tired of the verbal abuse. We're tired of abuse on the women in our council, and we say no to verbal abuse from any council member. It's and if it's this goes any further, we have zero tolerance right I'm, now. I'm, I'm we need to clean, drink the water, and we want it out. Objection. I'm calling for a five-minute recess without objection. Let me get the police chief on the line. This is way too much for Councilman Mays. After the election, I said that I would have... We're in a five-minute recess without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. I have not formally made... Point of order. We're in a, a recess without objection. And if, and if there's an objection, then we can go into any part of the agenda that we need to. So I don't know what's going on here. An illegal meeting, illegal communication. I can appreciate your protests. Stand and hold them, but let us deal with this. Um, Alicia, I understand everything being said. This, is, this council meeting is totally out of order.
flow with this agenda. Now, I'm willing to entertain a motion okay, for a special me. order to clear up this um, council finance committee thing. That would be the right thing to do. Now, if somebody want to put a motion on the floor, I count five, six, seven votes who don't like it. So, I'll entertain that motion to change that to the first order of the agenda. And, Mr. Davis, would you like to make a motion to put that as a special order at the first part of the agenda so we can clear this debacle up? Um, they want Monica Galloway to be finance chair, but let's do it right. I'm willing to do an agenda change, and that can be the first order if you so move. Councilman Mays, through Mr. President and Ms. Vice President, do y'all see it being beneficial to keep the business that's at hand in order and without it getting chaotic, to have a compensation as a special order of the decision that was made by his chair and of the finance chair? To you, Mr. President. Point of order. Point of order. That's the discussion I want to have. We're not in a formal meeting. Point of order, Mr. Davis. Are you making a motion so we can get into that discussion? We're not in a meeting. So you guys are talking freely as two council people in recess. No, we're not talking freely as two council people because three or more so talking business and making over. decisions is illegal. We are in an, we an open meeting. Over. This meeting has been called order. If you don't want a quorum, get up and leave. But we're not talking freely among three, four people like y'all do. I don't do that. It's illegal. So we're on the record. Um, the recess We've been on the record, Ms. Galloway, and you out of order. Mr. Out of Davis order. has the floor. Councilman Major, Mr. out of order. Da no, you out of order. Mr. Mr. Davis has order. the floor. We're trying to clear this up if you act Councilman in Mays, I'm giving you one warning. You and give me two. I'm giving you one warning. You out of order. You out of order, you are Ms. Galloway. You are not the, pres the council. I am acting. I'm the finance chair. Mr. Davis has the floor. Proceed, Mr. Davis. Ms. Galloway, you out of order. So, the first item on the agenda is additional changes to the agenda. <laughs> Does anybody on the council, Ms. Fields? Uh, I have an add-on resolution. Okay. Point of order. Point of order. What is your point of order, council? What is you and Ms. Fields doing? Y'all out of order. Y'all not, not going to conduct the you meeting. Point of order, and as the chair, My point of order is I'm the chair and haven't been removed by this council, and you and Ms. Fields is trying to proceed to take care of city business and talking, and you ain't been recognized. It's highly unlawful thank you, for the Mayor. city. So no, you thank you, Ms. Galloway. You recognize Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. At this time, I would like to make a before or either some kind of way move this as a special order to conversation about the removal of Mr. Mays out of the finance chair so this city could get about the business of taking care of business without a debacle where we're going to end up recessing, nothing going to get done, and, but a bunch of chaos, which the city don't need. So I would highly recommend this body to move a special order ahead of all business because we see it seem like it's a coup. And, I and I'm not that. siding with nobody. I second that. I'm not siding with nobody. But somebody got to be a cooler head. This can't be the yeah, Republican Democrat shutdown. And oh, this is a government shutdown right here. Because the business might not be legal. So so hold up, Mr. Winfrey. Hold up. Everybody can't talk at Council the same time. Councilman Major, out of order. No, you, you out of order. order. I rule you out of order. I know you have, but you ain't the chair. I am. I say you ain't. Mr. Technically and okay, legally, Mr. you ain't. So, Mr. Davis, you're saying it's been you would no like public announcement a special order no to, per, to be that's a what we've been once saying. we approve the happen. agenda changes, you'd like that happen. to be the first, first order of business first, before yes. the executive And Ms. Galloway, yes, you yes, highly out of order. I have that. Thank you, sir. Thank Mr. Guerra. I would like that to go after the executive session because I know that the attorneys are here on uh, getting paid for this time, okay. and I don't want to keep Mr. Darrow, you out of order. Y'all playing the game of an illegal coup, and it's being recorded, looked at, 
Okay. And that ought to be a shame. Madam Chair, sure. yeah. this business ain't even legal, 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 legal in the city. I would highly recommend it ain't this be the first order of business. Yes. Yes. It, it, it needs to be the first it's order that I'm calling for. And Miss Galloway, y'all out of order. Mr. Metcalf, do you see her steady talking when I'm moving out on her? Just witness this because everybody in this room will be on the witness stand. Every so member, those every attorney, as every rule, and every law. Rules have a special order. Ms. Galloway, you out of order. Thank you, sir. Is there any more agenda change? So we change? have um, the special order. I'm going to call for the, the finance. If there's no more agenda changes. All in favor of the agenda changes to include a special order. Ms. Galloway, order. you are in no it's position to call for a vote. And an I, I appeal the ruling of the chair or a ledge chair. Those that I hold. appeal the ruling of the chair or the alleged so the chair. Res, the now, I'm and telling you, you out of order. I'm now not, I'm not can, saying, Miss Galloway, you way, y'all way out of order on city second. business. There's this ain't no competition. This there's is wrong. There's an appeal on the floor. Is there a second? Who are there's you talking to, Miss Galloway? You ain't no judge. for lack of... I'm just trying to be nice. Would you remove so, her? Thank you. I didn't think you um, would. So now I just we have a special order to discuss You can't get the people chair. removed. Mr. You Mr. can't Ray. get people to follow you, rules. Mr. I've At never time, seen nothing like it. It's obvious. I've never it's seen nothing like it. It's a misunderstanding right. against council rules. Councilman Mayfield, he's been very highly disrespected. And this city here now, we don't went long enough being out of order. It's time to put it in order. And it's very embarrassing for us trying to conduct business in this matter. With everybody sitting here and we continually being out of order and we the head. If the head is foul, so is the body. Let's try to come to some type of, hopefully, uh, compromise that the whole body, whether it be a removal or whatever it is, according to our rules, that this city can move forward from this minute on. And that would be my question. Mr. President. Are we in discussion on his motion? Oh, yeah, President we are on the order. You out of order, she out of order, the whole proceeding <coughs> is out of order. Now, if y'all want cooperation from me, act like you really can read and play the game based upon the rules. Miss Galloway, I have given you a warning. You gave me warnings, and I have gave you warnings, and I can guarantee you, in a due process procedure, I will prove ten. to you. That y'all is conducting city business. And so I'm going to ask that you be removed if you continue to disrupt I'm going to continue to represent my ward in this seat. And I'm going to continue to Mr. I'm Metcalf, I'm demand I would, that I would we ask get that into you the business of the special order. I appeal the ruling of the check. You can't appeal once you've already been asked by the officer to leave. Oh, everybody appeal. else appeals. There's an appeal on, um, of the chair. Is there a second? There's an appeal. Is there a second? There's an appeal. Is there a second? I second. It, it's seconded. Call for the question. What? Miss. Point of order. So there's a call for point the question. Order. Is there support? Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. What's the point, point of, of order. order? I said point of order. Go ahead if you if she want to no. recognize okay, your no. point after you mine. They call, very discriminatory. You cannot call for the question unless everybody at this body at this table res, uh, resolve every complaint or issue in the conversation. You cannot hold me hostage without whatever conversation I want to have with this body. That's use abuse of of, of call for the question. Just she so out you, order. And just so you guys know and show me the rules. Rules. that according to and and um if, if you have order. the rules point of order. Number, point of order. Show it to me. Actually point um, of order. what's your point of order? Um What you is your point of order? I will state it when you quit talking. This is my point. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna do better than state it, I'm gonna read it. And it has to be relevant Ms. to Ms. the Galloway, council Galloway, Point of order. What's your job? Everybody's job is to cease talking. Now, this is what happens when you call a point of order. The president or chair of the presiding officer shall and is required to decide all questions arising under these rules and general parliamentary practice, subject to an appeal. While all questions of orders of interpretation of rules and priority of business is, due, is the duty of the chair, whoever that is, to first decide the question, it is the privilege of any member to appeal the decision.
the city. If the appeal is seconded, the chair states the decision and that it has been appealed from and then states the question, thus shall the decision of the chair as the judgment of counsel. The chair can, without leaving the chair, state reasons for his decision after which is open to debate. It wasn't even open to debate when you called on Ms. Worth. It's the point. But y'all so hasty then don't know the rules. So, I, Ms. Galloway, I appeal your ruling. Uh, Mr. Davis, this way you come in. Yes, you did. Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis I Mr. appeal Davis. her. You get I'm Mr. Not, Davis, you can second the appeal, appeal. of the ruling I, of the You chair. can't appeal anything. Yeah, I haven't we done can anything. appeal it any step of the way. No, you can't. If you want to second it, they going to have a problem. I haven't ruled anything, so you can't second anything. Yes, you did. Anything. You ruled and let her call for the question. I'm appealing it. You, I called you, the point of order and appealing it. You're Mr. in Davis, an appeal for in. being removed, no, counsel. Your job is to ask, is it a second to the appeal? Mr. Davis, do your job. Oh, you ain't going to ask a second? I appeal that. I just holler out second. No. Second, but I got to, I'm trying my You're best. You're talking about no. Any decision, you can't call on Madam the Chair. book to debate over. Public participation and maintenance of order, page 17 of 20. Maintenance of order and debate. The public and city council are both subject to the disorderly persons ordinance section 31-10 and the general code of conduct. Additionally, the chair or presiding officer has a responsibility order, and duty to enforce these rules order, and order. sanction for the purpose of maintenance of order. order Only order. the chair or presiding officer may determine order, and order. rule on who and what is in or out of order. Violations of this rule shall result in removal from the meeting. The, the public doesn't get to appeal the chair, neither does the council. You are removed, Councilman Mays, according to this rule in our council rule, page 17 of 20. If you live in this for 30 weeks and you're going to represent me, you had first hand now today is out off point. It says the chair <laughs> has the right this to point rule. of information. What's your point of Are information? Are you sure that law or rule is on point? That's what we say in law. That ain't on point. We That's have what appeal. we agreed to. We, no, we, the rule is written. It's you already are in an appeal. You're making a mock. It's a appeal. second to my other appeal. Ms. Cass, I was at, I'm asking you to remove him. I'm not going to resist arrest and get a felony. I will be suing. Now here you're removed in the middle of an appeal. I'm glad the appeal wasn't exhausted. That's what I'm glad about. We tried to, but you're disorderly Ms. Ms. Galloway, don't taunt at me. Please. You're unprofessional. Y'all are legally wrong. If Kendall, Caps, let off somebody, I'll do it in pro per. Yeah, I would never resist arrest and be called out for a felony. When an officer asks me to do something, I don't resist. It's a felony. And when you can be removed from your seat that you've been elected to and ain't committed a rule violation, it's a sad day in the city of Flint. And it's being orchestrated by Galloway, Winfrey. It looks like the clerk, the staff. Yeah, I see it. Thank you. And uh, just remember Proverbs, third chapter, fifth and sixth verse. Lean not to your own understanding. No, that's not me. God bless you. So the next item on the agenda is, or do you guys still want to talk about um, yes, the special yes. order on the finance? Please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. Now, what the something is, I'm not qualified to say it. But um, hopefully the rest of the year we can change the course that we're on. This is not going to work. Um, whether Councilman Mays is a chairperson or not, it's easy to cause an argument, but it's hard to resolve. Every problem got a solution. This body needs a solution in a hurry. Whatever... <coughs> It's hard to handle business when it's just disruption 
on top of disruption. We can't get nothing done. We scared off it was a young lady here from um, uh, the, the, the Genesee packaging. She gone. This is a, a debacle the, the that the whole country looking at. We just said, we got to do something. We got, to, we got young ladies here trying to protest. We got to do something. And what the something is, is this. Councilman Mays been around a long time. And what's been going on, and I, and I repeatedly said this statement, I ain't going to try to say too long. But after you do stuff so wrong so long, it becomes a habit. And this happened here in the deceased. Ain't another council meeting nowhere in the United States if you go on YouTube that function like this body. Operate, arguing against itself. This ain't making no sense. So what I would propose, if, if it is a vote, let it be that vote. But the council rules is done out of order because they create the arguments. Just like with the one, and I hope you understand when I say this. Call for the question. You set yourself up for argument. You don't call for a question until everybody had an opportunity to speak on that subject. You, you can't shut people out. Certain parts of the council rules have been written for arguments. If it, I don't know if it's the past council or not. But we need to try to hurry up and look at these council rules so we can start doing city business. But uh, we must do something. Madam Chair, and I'm done. Uh, Ms. Worthy, Ms. Fields, and then Mr. Winston. Uh, so I called for the question as I tried to do at the council meeting on Monday, uh, and I'm right and justified in asking that, and I'd like to read it to council. It's on page 202 if you have your Roberts Rules of Order. Page 202. Equal application of rules to colloquial forms such as a call for the question. A motion such as I call for or call the question or I move we vote now is simply a motion for the previous question made in non-standard form, and it is subject to all the rules in this section. Care should be taken that failure to understand this fact does not lead to violation of members' rights of debate. Sometimes the mere making of a motion for the previous question or call for the question may motivate unanimous consent to ending debate. Before or after such a motion has been seconded, the chair may ask if there is any objection right. to closing debate. If members object or try to get the floor, he should ask if there is a second to the motion or call. Or if it has already been seconded, he must immediately take a vote on rather. I don't think you're understanding what I'm reading. Yes, I do. Thoroughly. <laughs> I don't think you're comprehending the words I'm reading on this page. Go ahead. Um, That's what I'm reading. I'm just going to put it in my own words. No, just, no, just read it for the record. Okay, just start. okay all right. If, if members object to... If members object or try to get the floor, he should ask if there's a second to the motion or call, or if it has already been seconded, she must immediately take a vote on whether to order uh, the previous question also call for the question. But regardless of the wording of the motion or call uh, seeking to close debate, it always requires a second and a two-thirds vote taken separately from and before the vote on the motion to which it is applied to shut off debate against the will of even one member who wishes to speak and has not exhausted his right to debate. Point of information. This is called the question to moot point right now. No, the, no, the, no, the, no, no. No, the source of their order. You don't get to call, you don't get point of order to take the floor. If you want to turn, I can put I your name down. I understand calling the question. Okay, but um, are you done, Ms. Worthy? Ms. Worthy. Oh, yeah, sorry. Ms. Fields. I just want to read out of Robert's Rules on page 257. It's under 256 in appeal, and it's number five. Is debatable unless it, A, relates to indecorum or a transgression of the rules of speaking. So uh, that appeal is not debatable. Thank you. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Uh, this kind of reading the Robert's Rules and all those, there's another form that we could use that for to our advantage, and yes. that's called Rules Committee. Yes. This is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. As it relates to Councilman Mays, and we're talking about removing him uh, as chair, he's never been appointed chair. 
Let me give you an example. Now, he said that he and I had met. If you remember, in a council meeting, I said when I was elected council chair uh, for the second time, I said that I wanted to interview everybody. And after I interviewed everybody, I would make that decision, and it would be a formal decision. I, the first person that I met was with was Councilman Mays. Councilman Mays indicated to me that he thought that the, the meeting that, that he grew up at was a meeting for me to remove him. I said, no, this is not what the meeting was for. Remember, I told you that I was going to interview everybody. I said, Councilman Mays, you've got skills. You know how to do a lot of things. You ask probing questions that sometimes make me think and sometimes it's changed my vote. That's a good thing. But I explained to him, as I appoint these chairs, they are leaders. They're in the leadership positions. In my opinion, as president of this council, leaders bring people together. They don't divide and do things that's divisive. And I said, then, and then we talked about the problems and issues that have been coming up consistently in meetings, how people would, would uh, uh, say that he would cut folks off or didn't want to be cut off. So the rules that he wanted for him, which were good rules, he didn't want to use them across the board. And so I did say to him, I said, Councilman Mays, with the skill sets you have, if you would just change those attitudes, man, you could serve as finance chair. I would like to have you to serve as finance chair. But you have to apply the rules across the board. You know, I said that again. I am not going to allow a person to... Uh, serve in the chair's position, that's going to be out of order. How do you call folks in order and you out of order? Those were the discussions that he and I had. Yes, I would have liked for him to have been a uh, chair uh, with his skill set, but with his behavior, that's like an offset in town. I don't have to explain that. Everybody knows that. So now we get here and he tried to hijack our meeting. And then he tried to tell me what I said. I know what I said. So again, my position is just as I told him. I spoke to him. There was a meeting of the minds. And I said to him, I can't use you as chair because of your behavior. We had a meeting and you told me here are some things that you were going to do. And we had a committee, uh, a special affairs committee, and you just act like we never said anything. You need to hold me accountable as your president. And I ought to be able to hold you accountable as councilman. And there's a decorum, there's a way that we ought to act. And when we don't act that way, we're out of order. I don't care what you say. We can talk about the rules and, right. and, and all those kinds of things. And, and I'm not going to back off of that. So when we talk about it, and I'm not trying to embarrass him. That's, anybody who knows me knows that that's not me. That's not how I do things. But again, people who work under my supervision, if they exhibit the behavior that not just Councilman May, but some others around this table, I would have gotten rid of them a long time ago. So again, we're talking about whether or not Councilman Mays can be finance chair or whether he deserves to be in my mind. And because of his not willing to apply the rules fairly, because of his outbreaks and outbursts, and because of his abusiveness, I don't think that he deserves that position. And my, my point is what I said to him. My stance is what I said to him. Councilman Mays, I can't. I can't have you. And he got upset, as he should, and I, and I understand that. And that was what we said. There was a meeting of the mind. I can't give you a finance chair if you can't be a person who is going to facilitate the meetings and stop beating up folks. Stop chucking on folks. Yes, you deserve respect. It's mutual. So I say that I do not want him as finance chair until I just don't, that's, that was my decision. That's my decision now. Mr. Griggs. Okay. Uh, the source of the council irritation has been removed. Everybody get over it, please. Everybody's been appropriately adrenalized. And let's continue with a, a regular council meeting. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Ms. Worthing. Then Mr. Davis, and then Ms. Um, I don't think reading from Robert's Rules of Order is a waste of this council's time, um, considering the fact that we don't follow the rules. Uh, I, I think some of us need to read Robert's Rules and allow us to state the rule and follow it. it it's not the Rules Committee 
uh, that this needs to be discussed. We need to meet with Coco and we need to do this right. Um, unfortunately, no one will listen to another council member because they just discredit it. Uh, and so we absolutely need to have another person come in who is uh, objective and, and not just another person um, stating to another. I read it. Call for the question is a privileged motion and it was in order. And if we can't agree with what the words say, then we have alternative facts going on here and we need to come to an agreement. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Once again, I want to say this. Uh, <coughs> colleague, Mr. Griggs, uh, this here conversation we're having right now is long overdue. It may slow down the process of what we're doing business tonight, but it's going to benefit down the road if it's done correctly. For one, we got abuse of Robert's rules. Robert's rules are supposed to help conduct a, a proper meeting. Any business meeting, it's supposed to be in the background. If something get out of order, then you put it in to pull it back. I do a lot of meetings in my, I have done a lot of meetings in my day. The way we use point of order is abuse, point of information is abuse, um, appeals is abuse, and committee is different than council. Committee, we get in here, whatever it is, long as it takes, work it out so we get out there and we ain't got to hash it. This body been doing it wrong. I'm going to repeat till you understand. I'm not a peon, or I'm going to use the term like on myself, wet behind the ear when it comes to conducting business meetings. We got to treat people as nobody going to give us respect for each other but us. You can call in president, whoever. We have to be the one. The way you do it, notice when Councilman Mays was chairing the meeting and he, whether it's finance, whether it's be the hearings. It's, it's very in order because he got a thing about him. He like taking time and being thorough. And when he's in control, he tend to do that. He see everybody in the room, he'll, even the people sitting around the room, he pay attention. But sometimes you get your feelings caught up when you get disrespected. And in certain motions, a point of order cuts you off. Question, cut, uh, call for the question, cut you off. It happened in here just the last committee meeting. We got to get to a place where we have a real conversation because Councilman Mays will be back in that chair. And if he's not satisfied every time he comes, we got the same problem. The best way to deal with it is to resolve that problem. And we can do it. We can talk to him. But the thing with this, respect is the key. If you do something wrong, this here book do not conduct me. It's there if we're out of order. The abuse of what's been going on for years, Jackie Poplin, he always referred back. It's been done wrong. Uh, Robert's rules cannot be the subject of our meeting. Every time, we're too rigid in this room. We got to be the work. When you come in committee, don't put no clock on it. Let's try to get to the end so everybody question and answer. Then we call for the question. You don't cut people off. Come on now, let's learn to do city business, and I'm done. I'd like to make a motion to move into executive closed session. Not for all of the purposes that are listed on our agenda, but um, as requested by the Department of Law to update the City Council regarding one Flint Police Department Sergeant's unit labor negotiations and two, the Greasy Settlement. I'm not including in the motion to move to executive session for the AECOM contract because it was requested by Councilor, Councilperson Mays, and I don't even know what his purpose was in doing that. So. I, my motion is there's to move into executive order. session for the reasons I just stated. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. Right. Yeah, yeah, we had a motion on the floor, Council. Point of order. Motion. Motion. It was still on the floor. You're debating on the finance chair. Uh, yep. I, I was was we had a motion yeah. on the floor, the finance chair. It, was it, wasn't, it wasn't a motion. I mean, Calm down, everybody. It wasn't a motion. It was a special order yes. to yes. discuss, yes. which is it's, 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 it's no, a no, special no, no, order. No. Yeah. So, so just so you know, if there's no motion on the floor. We were having discussions oh. in a special order. Okay. And so that was asked to be part of the agenda that will precede the executive closed session. Madam so, Chair, I'd like to withdraw my motion thank you. in favor of our believe our president wants to make a motion. Mr. Guerra would have something for us. Did you have something, Mr. Guerra? No, I just want to proceed with business. So Mr. Mr. Winfrey. And, and, and so I think what uh, uh, my colleague, if I'm right, my colleague is saying we've got to do this. Uh, even though I didn't uh, formally appoint Councilman Mays as chair. 
I would like to go ahead and, and, and uh, remove him as chair of the Finance Committee That's when, when this body has to vote on. Support. <coughs> moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Ms. Stevens. I just want to state for the record that if you read council rules, the uh, council president appoints chairs and the council president can certainly remove chairs. So uh, even though it wasn't a formal appointment, I believe it was just kind of an interim, um, the council president certainly has the right to do that according to our council rules. <coughs> anyway, so that's my discussion. And I will be supporting the removal of Mr. Mays. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council rules. 4.1, the president, unless otherwise directed by the council, shall appoint all <coughs> committee chairs and vice chairs for a one-year term, which shall end on the second Monday of November. So it seemed to me a, a vote would be in order, be the proper way. And that way, if you wanted to remove him, it would be no like what we had today. And it, it would involve the council more than in, along with the the president and the group. Mr. Gary. I'm, I'm fine about it. Yeah. Um, I, I would support whatever the um, will of this body is. I just want to make sure that this community, you know, hears that the president did not make a formal appointment. And so what we are doing is in addition to the fact that that wasn't done. And so I'm a little bit skeptical by it. Because I don't want it to give any validity to what Councilman Mays has said. But in an effort to bring a unity in this body, um, I will be um, supporting that decision. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of um, supporting... What is What you say? Roll call. I said roll call. You, you don't chair the meeting, and we don't have to do a roll call. All this you go again. This you go again. Of Councilman we, we May say aye. 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 Those that oppose. Nay. Any abstentions? The motion carries to the sixth one. <coughs> Madam Chair, now I would like to make my motion to move into executive closed session. Only for the reasons number one and two as stated on the agenda, not the third reason. So I will read the reasons. One, to discuss the Flint Police Department Sergeant's Unit labor negotiations and two, the Grizzly Settlement only. Ms. Gordon. I second that. The motion seconded. Would you guys like to hear from, what is your point of order? Before we move into the executive session, Madam Chair, we usually hear from the attorney. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask if you guys wanted to hear from the attorney. Ms. Will. Uh, the city attorney's office requests an executive session for purposes of discussing pending litigation and notice of intent to sue. And uh, at your pleasure, an attorney client privilege document. Those were the three requests. The first would be for the sergeant's union's labor negotiation, um, which would be a labor issue. The second would be uh, the Grissy matter, which is a notice of intent to sue. The third, um, which was requested, was. Uh, Discussion of an attorney client, client privilege document, um, referral 190004, um, to make sure you don't do anything that's detrimental to the city in its position. So, Ms. Bill. My motion remains the same at this point in time. I would like to go in for the first and second reasons <coughs> and exclude the third. And that's what was seconded, Ms. Willard. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Okay. But you. But usually, I make the request, so I'm making the formal request for the record. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, oh roll call okay. for um, going into executive session. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mr. Guerra. Yes. Ms. Fields. Yes. Ms. Winfrey. Mr. Winfrey. Yes. Mr. Winfrey. Yes. Mr. Winfrey. Yes. Ms. Conway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Wooden? Yes. Okay. Right legs. Who's second that motion to do it? Mr. Gary? Yes. 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 Mr. Gary? Yes.
we are back in session. So, um, I would you know, ask that we leave the special order 180420 on um, for, for the next committee. Bring us to 190015 special order. Okay. Uh, if I may have a Stacy Cake is here um, to talk about the resolution. Is there any way for us to, to change the order so that she can talk about the exemption, especially because it is time sensitive that I think the last time we were not able to have that discussion because we ran out of time, so now it's back to committee. Which one are you talking about? I'm talking about the first resolution, resolution number 190001. Aye. The red no, no. We're on special order. That's what I'm saying. I'm asking if we can. Right. Just so you know, we do changes at the beginning of the council meeting. I didn't okay. realize that we were going to be. Okay. So I apologize for that. Okay. Mr. Excuse the council. I would recommend that we move the resolution to handle the special orders. I really did it at first. There's nothing that's going to happen. Motion for Ms. Fields. Support. Support. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor of moving resolutions before a special order, say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's done. So we are at resolution 190001. Mr. Garrett? Yeah. I make a motion at the 190001 council. Motion on the floor, Mr. Davis? No, I'm sure. I'll move and second. Is there any discussion? Ms. Fields? I would like to hear from our assessor. <coughs> okay. Has something to contribute to the discussion? Um, no, what this is just a normal resolution we have to pass every year just to update our the income levels because we go by what is set by the federal guidelines and we reduce those. So every year we just have to bring this resolution forth to meet those requirements through the state. And that's it. So is this, is this a pretty much a duplication of what we get every year? Absolutely. Okay. Mr. I think this was on the floor last time, but there wasn't enough votes to pass it, so I just got to step back to committee. Mm -hmm. You guys had already. Yeah, oh. so just okay. to clarify. Yeah. Okay, Ms. I, I think on the floor there was something mentioned by someone about water exceptions, of water poverty exception or something. No, this um, this doesn't, this is actually just for property taxes. I know there was something with the emergency manager that had tied it previously, but that has gone away and um, residents do now have access through LIWA for um, poverty reductions through that. So any um, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of sending this to council say aye. Aye. Those that oppose? Any abstentions? Resolution passes. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Chair. I make a motion that we send 190008 to council. Yes, sir. And move to support it. Is there any um, discussion? What is this? Everybody, do we already know what it is? Okay, yes, Mr. Benson. Uh, this is a rewind service for our uh, electric motors and wastewater and water plant. And so was this budgeted for already? Yes. And so did, do we have to bid it out or no? It's already been bid out. Okay, and this was the lowest bid? Yes. Any further questions? <clears throat> All in favor of moving this council say aye. 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 Those that oppose? So, we are done with all the resolutions. Oh, oh, oh Miss Fields, I'm sorry. Miss Fields has an add on. Uh, so, yes, yes. Your branch. Right, right but Miss Fields included it in the changes to the. So, as soon as I get done with hers, I'll get with Mr. Brand. Make sure you have I know. That. Yep, thank okay. you. Okay, okay. I have, uh, oops, where'd they go? Right here. Um, this is my add on resolution. Here, I would actually. Sure. So, this resolution number one, add on number one? Yeah. Okay. I would like to uh, read this, and if anyone has any questions, because um, I was the author of this, this is similar to a different resolution that was presented, but it's very much different. It's very detailed. 
Okay, resolution to adopt lead pipe replacement program policy by the city council. Whereas the city of Flint has a goal of replacement of all lead and galvanized steel water service lines in the city of Flint with copper water service lines in a manner that complies with the settlement agreement dated March 27, 2017, and concerned pastors at L versus Corey, etc. L, case number 16 CV. 10277. Whereas the city of Flint does not have an active project manager. Ms. Fields, can you hold for one second? Um, Paul, there's a, um, it's, it's echoing off of, or maybe I'm hearing your thing. Oh, so I I'm like, it. oh, I'm like, that case voice. Oh, can you turn that down? Because, yeah, that would be great. Okay. okay. All I could hear is like, you know how you're on the phone and they say, could you put your. Turn your radio down. Okay, so go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Whereas the city of Flint does not have an active project management contract with any company to accomplish the goal of identifying and replacing all lead and galvanized steel water service lines, um, whereas the city has purchasing ordinances that require solicitation of competitive sealed bids for large purchases, and if anyone doesn't have their purchasing ordinance, with them. I have copies of it and relevant sections are highlighted if you'd like to set of that. Um, uh, therefore, did I skip any? No. Therefore, be it resolved that the city will promptly reissue a solicitation of competitive sealed bids for project management of the lead line service replacement program to include bullet one. A requirement that the project manager so utilize the University of Michigan service line material predictive model, the predictive model, as created and updated by Dr. Schwartz and Abernathy to determine the priority of the addresses to be explored, and that the project manager shall ensure that lead and galvanized steel lines located shall be replaced or funds secured for replacement before lower priority addresses are explored. Bullet two, the requirement, excuse me, I'll get rid of my gun. A requirement that the project manager shall comply with all provisions of the settlement agreement and any modifications thereto, including the reporting requirements and that all definitions and requirements in the contract with the project manager shall be consistent with the definitions and requirements of the settlement agreement and any modifications thereto. Third bullet point. A requirement that city council shall approve all contracts, change orders, or addenda to any contract with the project manager and all subcontracts change orders or addenda with the project manager and any other party before the effective date before any of the services are performed. Page 2, bullet point 4. A requirement that the safe parameters hydrovac method of exploration will be utilized as recommended by Dr. Schwartz and Abernathy. Please see attachment A, which I will also read. A requirement that the project manager, Bullet 5, shall submit written progress reports to City Council no less frequently than monthly, detailing progress in replacement of lead and galvanized steel lines and comparison of costs incurred to costs budgeted. Be it further resolved that within 30 days after adoption of this resolution, the CFO of the City shall deliver a written report to City Council which includes detail of all costs and obligations incurred pursuant to the settlement agreement, including obligations not yet paid, contested obligations, and a reasonable estimate of possible liabilities not yet invoiced or asserted. Next bullet, detail of the remaining funds available to the City of Flint to complete the replacement and removal of all lead and galvanized water service lines in the City. And next bullet, a statement that the funds remaining are sufficient to complete the replacement and removal of all lead and galvanized water service lines in the city, or if the funds are not sufficient, describing the plan to obtain the required funds. Now the next page, which is the attachment, I will read it, and this was recommended um, by the creators of the predictive model. Uh, Resolution to adopt, attachment A, resolution to adopt lead pipe replacement program policy regarding the use of hydrovac and excavations. 
as recommended by the creators of the University of Michigan Service Line Material Predictive Model, the Predictive Model, Dr. Eric Schwartz and Dr. Jake Abernathy, regarding instructions for the selection of homes for replacement. In order to determine whether a home will receive a full service line replacement, each home must undergo the following sequence of decision rules. One, if the home predicted to have a letter galvanized service line with a probability of at least 10%, according to the predictive model, then the home will receive a full service line replacement. Two, if the predictive model deems this property to have a letter galvanized service line with probability less than 10%, meaning the service line is likely to only be comprised of copper, then the home will receive a hydrovac inspection at the curb stop to determine the materials of public and private service lines. <coughs> if a letter galvanized line is found in either the public or private line, then the home will receive a service line replacement. Three, if the hydrovac inspection at the curb stop finds copper on both the public and the private portions as they appear at the curb stop, then the hydrovac inspection crew should do all of the following to further verify the materials. A. Use the hydrovac to dig a wider hole farther along the length of the public and private portions of the service line. And B. Do an in-home inspection of the private portion of the service line. These efforts will determine whether any smaller portions of lead or galvanized pipes such as splice lines exist at the property. If any portion of lead or galvanized pipes is detected, the home will receive a full excavation. <coughs> Four, otherwise, if no lead or galvanized material is detected in any of these above procedures, then the home will not receive a full service line replacement. So I don't believe... So it's not excavation. Ex excuse me. Excavation. <coughs> um, I can't remember. Did I actually make a motion no. to move this... To council, well, I'd like to make a motion to move this to council. There's a motion on the floor. Move I'll forward and second that. And move and second it into discussion. Yeah, Ms. Morgan. Um, I don't think you read because I know the one big thing with the administration is that the hole be dug big enough. Is that in here? Yes. The, okay, so. did I miss that? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Except where you dig a big hole. It's in the hole. Page, page three, number three. Yeah. Does it say the size that they have to... Mm -hmm. I think we should just add that. We can add a size. You just dig a wider hole to discover all connections. You couldn't just say eight foot, oh. twelve foot. Well, then... You, should, you, don't you know. shouldn't put any restrictions okay. on a hole. Okay, Mr. Ritchie. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we covered all our bases. I really like that it's very specific. These lines are different sizes. Okay. Listen, I know way more about lead lines and copper lines and hydrovax than I ever wanted to know. <laughs> but based on everything I've learned for this non sciencey person, um, I do agree with this. Um, the predictive model is important. Um, uh, Dr. Schwartz and Abernathy, they know what they're doing. Uh, they've helped Flint for free. Uh, and I want to thank them again for uh, their input into this. Uh, and, and I really, I really, really am um, happy to see this because no matter who does it, then we have these, uh, this in place that they must follow and, and get the job done correctly. So. Mr. Winfrey? Can I ask them, who, who created this? I did. And then was it done with people, uh, uh, people like uh, Mr. Benzik? Right, that's what I was going to ask. And, uh, other, and I want to ask any of my colleagues, and I understand what you're trying to get, but we have to really be careful about how we start doing things. But if, let me ask this to my colleagues, if I may, uh, counsel, and this is to, through you to all of my colleagues. How many of you have talked to any of the folks that actually have experience doing the work, like the folks that dig the holes, like the folks that do the hydrovac, like the inspectors? How many of you have talked? How many of, uh, of, uh, of my colleagues have talked to those individuals about these things? So have I. Uh, in fact, I just talked to one. And one of the questions that I ask is, tell me about this hydrovac business. 
uh, is it, you know, and, and, and this, this particular uh, contractor said to me that the hydro backing had missed some splices. That's what he said to me. You know, just last night, that was the second one that I had talked to. I talked to inspectors and the same thing that they're saying. They're not fighting over this hydro backing and excavation. They just want to get the lead stuff out, which is, I think, that's what we want. So then, again, when I look at a document like this, and I understand where you're trying to go, um, Councilwoman, but I have a problem with it if you haven't let the DPW director be in on this information or in this discussion and finding that kind of information out. And I know Mr. Griggs is, a, is an engineer, and I respect his, 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 his expertise, but I, 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 think we, I think we really need to be careful about how we, not how, we, how much we're interested in this, but who we have at the table when we're creating these things. Because then we will get into, because some of us have some problems with the way the, the other resolutions for this stuff was done. And it seems like we're doing the same, the same thing, the same, we're, we're, we're doing the same problems that we had problems with other folks. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I got a, a whole lot of issues with this. I can't support this if I wanted to. Number one, <laughs> was this done in coordinates or with uniformity with the administration, such as the mayor or somebody that was under the guise of companies such as ACON. We got to make sure, like Councilman uh, President Winfrey just stated, safety is number one, it's paramount. You can go to McDonald's and get a hamburger, or you can go over here to that black steakhouse, whatever the name of the way out there, where it costs all that money. Black Rock. I'm not being racial black. Rock. In other words, it's apple, you got to have people that know what they're doing. And trying to save a dollar, a model mean nothing to me. You have some reason, I got utmost respect for these so-called models. It's clear that the mayor administration as well as the health department say they want to be 100% for every. I'm looking at small percentage, sound harmless, but like I said before, if it's your house, people are dying. This is a crisis we're under. And people tend to, for whatever, buck the administration again. Get what... Mr. Benzie, get with the mayor and let everybody sign off and then send it to council and I'll be 100% for it. But we can't play with little Ray Ray and Pookie and them, whoever it is, that you contact and whoever doing these predictive models. They predict the weather and it's snowing now. And they said the weather. We can't play with this. And I'm not going to be over at that court, me being tried for something foolish. It's not our money. Let's utilize it. We had the best company. We voted it down. Now we're going to go just second rate to anything. I will not support this no kind of way unless it could. It have to include everybody that's sitting here that make them kind of decision, and, and mainly the mayor. And I'm done. Okay. It's my engineering opinion that if lead is missed, it's the fault of the inspector. When there's a doubt, you dig the whole big one. And you do it the simple way, the efficient way with hydroback. You can dig as big a hole as you want with hydroback just because, you know, we missed one, all right? Well, the inspector missed it. How, how did it get corrected? Did you tell me the hole got covered up and then got re -dug? Is that what happened? I don't think so. It could have. The inspector, well, if they did, they were foolish. The inspector missed it. That's it. <laughs> Are you saying that Silly. like you're done? I'm done. Okay, yes, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the, way, the, way I'm, the way I'm reading this is the uh, the curb stuff kind of sounds a little bit more like the spot checking that we had originally. I'm not in agreement with that at all. Um, I do think that hydrovac could be used as a method or a tool to actually dig out around that, but unlike but this does seem more like it's the spot checking method that could possibly miss splice lines. Mm -hmm. Now, I may be reading it wrong, but that's my understanding. So, however, um, I think a lot of the stuff in here would be good. I assume that we could have the, um, it. Is it in place up for bid, or what's going on with the contract right now? The administration? Could I ask Dave? Yeah. Through you, the chair, through Mr. Benson. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, I believe it's either released for bid for a project manager. It's either today or it's going to be tomorrow morning. I'm not sure if he hits send on yet or not. We've been working uh, frantically here to get that ready to go. 
And so and before uh, anything like this would be passed to council, would you want to, my, my, I want to make a move, what I want to do is postpone it to the next committee just so that DPW can have more time to look at this contract and make sure it applies. You mean it's it, 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 Yeah, deep, postpone it. So that, I want to make a motion. Make a motion to postpone to the next committee. Put substitute motion. Substitute motion to postpone to next committee. To the next committee. Mr. Winfrey? Mm -hmm. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Mr. Green. Why postpone it? Why delay? Give me a reason. Give me a fact. I can give me, give it to you. It's a floor. Just can't do it that way. You just can't fight fast enough. <laughs> Mr. Griggs, we just. You guys, wait, 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 you guys, way. Mr. Okay, come on, you guys. Mr. Well, Griggs, well, people deserve to be heard, and these are your colleagues. And a motion is on the floor. You are fine, but your colleagues have the right to. So, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Miss um, Worthing, did you? Yeah, I did. Okay, so. Um, I think if there's an issue with the HydroVac, um, I can have the wording for you by council. I don't think there's a need to postpone. Uh, if we postpone, we're gonna um, we're gonna delay this, and and once we find a. Um, and we put it in bid and we find that project manager, I want them to know that this is what they need to follow. Um, they're not going to miss. If, 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 like Mr. Griggs said, if the inspector is doing their job, they're going to dig a bigger hole. There's absolutely been no problem with the hydro vacuum method. Um, and in fact, um, the NRDC, Concerned Pastors, and the state have all said it's a practice that the city needs to be doing. It is in... Um, the wording, uh, we do not have the money to pay them to dig by hand. You can dig a small hole by hand or a big hole by hand. You can dig a small hole with the hydrovac or a big hole with the hydrovac. A whole dog is a whole dog. And I think we're missing the point here. This was recommended by Dr. Swartz and Dr. Abernathy. They are uh, extremely knowledgeable on what they are doing. Um, they had a 94% success rate in finding these lead mines. Um, and if anyone in the administration has a problem with that, it's severely misguided. Uh, and, and I would not agree with that. Um, so yes, this is a good one. I would not support the substitute motion to postpone. We need to make sure that this is uh, passed. And if you want specific wording in there, we can get that to you by council. Mr. David. Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate the acknowledgement. Uh, the experience seemed to be lacking in this proposal as well as quality control. Um, A.E. Company, they was one of, no, they wasn't one. They was the best in the nation, far as I'm concerned, in what I spoke with in the law office just last week or so. And they was at the place of so thorough at what they was doing for our years, service line replacement. The last phase, uh, Mr. I can't recall his name, but anyway, they wanted to come in and check it even at the water meter, make sure it was copper to copper. They was the right way to go. Now, we voted them out, and now we left with bidding out something that was already well taken care of. We should have made adjustments if we wanted to, to their budget or whatever. Safety was theirs. Ain't no way in the world I would be supporting something that's just put before us, rushed through, because people come because they want to use a predictive, keyword, predictive model. You don't put predictive model in people dying, and sicknesses running rampant, and we in this kind of, and, and the state owe us, as well as every resident that's been affected. We don't want to go in, I'm sure we, the administration, as well as this council person, don't want to get in that murky water just playing games with people health and life. So I will not be supporting this unless the whole administration, as well as department here, as well as DPW, and everybody else sign off of this, off of this here type of um, document. And I'm done. Thank you, sir. Ms. Fields. Okay. First of all, I'd like to remind you that what, what I just read here and what you're reading is a policy about how to go about... Okay, it's a plan for how we go about getting our lead pipe replacement program going again. Now, the mayor said at one point in some media that the majority who turned down the AECOM contract had no plan. What was their plan? Well, point of information. What's your point of information? 
Would she not know AECOM was the project manager of even all of the documentation, everything was put together under them, and there was not no, uh, so to speak, no uh, stone left unturned with AECOM, and they can handle everything with this emergency? Thank you. Yes, please. Okay, so the mayor said, you know, what was the plan after, after council voted down the last AECOM contract? So this is a plan, and it's a plan in the form of a policy, and it just does some simple things. One, it says, which we would have to do anyway, that we are going to do, and, and we have to, what is what the Concerned Pastor Settlement Agreement and their proposals say we need to be doing. So, you know, there is some agreement that eventually whatever this proposal is going to be, it's being worked on, will be brought to us. But... Dr. Schwartz and Abernathy have actually been working with the NRDC. Okay, so uh, I think they're pretty up on what part of this proposal consists of. So part of this assistance was based on some of the things that is likely to go into this proposal. So all this is saying is that we're going to do a competitive bid for to reissue the solicitation. Um, and it's just a policy. It's just council saying that's part of the plan, uh, which we have to do because we can't approve any other contract that's proposed, especially for AECOM, because that contract was dead. <clears throat> there can't be a change order because you can't do a change order on a contract that is dead. Okay, so it simply says we're going to rebid this, which the administration should have no problem with because they're saying they intend to bid. And then the rest of this about the predictive model, um, you know, I'm not going to go into discussion. I think there's been a lot of discussion. I think people pretty much know that the predictive model has been the successful uh, model, and far more lead lines were replaced with that than with the AECOM, whatever method they use to select uh, properties. But big point here, especially Mr. Winfrey, big point you need to understand is that regard and uh, Mr. Guerrero too, regarding the lack of using Hydrovac, okay, the state letter to the city said they were not going to reimburse us for any method, okay, that didn't include Hydrovac. They're not going to reimburse us for uh, this manual dig. So I want to ask the finance director right here and now, okay, how much debt have we incurred, okay, that's sitting out there that occurred because we were not using Hydrovac, or debt isn't the right word. How much more did that increase? So we've got to be very careful when we say the word debt. Because it is the position of the finance director, it's also the position of the city attorney, therefore the position of the administration, that that money is owed to us. And so with that being said, even though we have, we have been communicated to that that money is being withheld, we have also communicated that that money is owed to us and we're working on a resolution as we speak. But that number is north of $6 million, if you're talking about the withheld amount. Okay, so the withheld amount that the state's saying they're not going to reimburse us, is six million dollars. Well, I put it to the rest of council, and how are we going to pay that six million dollars if the state prevails in that opinion? Do you know of an extra six million we have to be able to pay that difference? So I think we better come to a realization that uh, we need to agree to some compromise on what needs to be manually excavated and what does not mean to be need to be. So I won't support that substitute motion. I would support a motion to move it to special affairs and ask for a special order to have doctors Abernathy and Schwartz here to answer questions. So um, wait, I have Miss Oh, um, <laughs> Wait, was that a motion? Was that Sorry, a motion? motion. You no, know, I just said I wouldn't support this substitute okay. motion to move it back to committee. Okay. Councilman, I'm aware of what this is. I read it. Then you read it. And I, I'm fairly, uh, fairly well understanding. But I think 
the, the uh, motion that Council Kara made to, uh, to postpone it until uh, Rob Benzik and or the administration and the administration agrees is not, a, is not uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, why is there a rush? Why can't we, why can't uh, Rob have an opportunity to, to read this and then respond to it? And I'm not going to get into a long drawn discussion. I'm going to take that motion. So, Mr. Briggs. Okay. We're expected to immediately resolve add-ons when they're brought to us and we. The DPW has had plenty of opportunity to read this add -on. No, they have not. Why not? It's right there in front of them, isn't it? Do they have a copy? They haven't read it? I brought, I brought it well, as they an add-on. they reading it like we have to read that. Madam Chair. Um, no. We get stuck with add-ons every meeting. Thank you. I, I'm not finished. I uh -huh. Hydrovacking is the safest excavation method. You don't take a chance of hitting a gas line, an electric line, or a water line. Matter of fact, I wonder if we hit any lines with the backhoes. Can anybody answer me that? We hit lines with backhoes and we hit lines with hydrovacs too. What damage can you do with water on a line? Water can cut right through a line. Which line? Huh? Gas line, steel line, a gas line, steel line. A okay. gas line if, it's, if it's steel, a, it can cut through a cable. That's why we call them a stick first. Okay. Well, it's quicker and it's a lot cheaper. And I think one of the five contractors isn't even capable of hydrovacking. Is that Stevens? Can they, can they hydrovac if this gets passed? Are they able to hydrovac? They all subcontract off their hydrovac. Okay. All right, I'm done. Ms. Gordon, you have a couple more minutes. Right. He shocked me. <laughs> that was good. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, okay. Um, actually, I feel like, seriously, um, an expert on this after delving into this. Uh, talking to other people, um, we heard from Dr. Schwartz for hours on this predictive model. <laughs> you were there. Uh, so they know what they're doing. Um, this isn't just willy-nilly just drawn like within a few minutes. This was really thought out. Um, and, if, and if our DPW doesn't, director doesn't support it, then I would have to question, I'm out of time? Uh, why not? Um, you know, I don't always agree with him. He said more work was done than ever before um, in previous years. And yeah, there was more work done. More copper lines were dug up than ever before. Um, so there comes a time where you have to become an expert on something yourself so that it gets done. And if, if anything else, the, the letters from NRDC and the state should really be driving council to take the lead on this. Because the mayor has refused to uh, uh, comply with these letters. Uh, and so it's council's responsibility now to say we will comply with the state and the NRDC. One information. Is she sure of the statement she just made about the mayor not complying with anything? Absolutely, yes. I'll back that up 100%. And I can give you the language and the letters from the state and the NRDC. So are you done? Can I... Um, I just want to say to my colleagues, I'm going to support your um, motion. I think that any person should find it unreasonable um, for your own colleagues not to have the ability to in read this information, digest this information. When we do ordinances as a council, we take it up in legislation. We look at different things. This, although I respect the work that has been done by my colleague, yeah, I can read through this, but I should have the ability to research it myself. When you put policies in place, it governs. And so it is irresponsible for any of us 
not to be willing to have the administration or other colleagues check our work. Point That's not what we do. What's your point of information? I think if, if it's these add ones, then we ought to postpone every one of the add ones we get. Mr. We don't Griggs, get time, we get two minutes. Mr. Or, Griggs, you're using it out of order, and so I'm going to let, yes, you are. I so, you, you, you know what, Mr. Griggs, you're out of order, and so your comment is noted. So, I think that it is unfair to this body for any of us individually to bring something and just say, hey, trust me. Because I've talked to, or I've done the research, we don't do business like that. And so we have the ability, and we shouldn't be rude to each other. We should respect each other like we respected you when you spoke. And so I'm just saying that I'm going to support the postponement. But what I will say to my colleagues, and, and I'm going to say to the colleagues that are for this motion, I implore you to consider a postponement as opposed to a failure which means you won't be able to bring it up again unless you do a motion for reconsideration which will require six votes and if you couldn't get the votes here chances are you're not going to get the vote when you want to reconsider so I'm asking those that would vote against the postponement to be reasonable and to consider what your colleagues are asking and just give some gifts but I'm done Mr. Winfrey you had something Again, I understand where my colleague is coming from. But again, we get upset and we did not have time. We don't have time to research it ourselves. Even Mr. Griggs, uh, Councilman Griggs, thought that the administration and Dora, Rob Benzik, and others had an opportunity to do this. I, I just think that we ought to do that. We ought to at least give them the opportunity to read it. I understand where you're going with it. But I would really like to see, I would really like to hear from Mr. Benzik after he's had an opportunity to read it. I would really like to have uh, uh, some input from those folks that are out there doing the digging uh, about this, because we keep talking about this predictive model, and I talked to the folks about the predictive model, and even though they didn't knock it, they didn't think that the predictive model was all that it was, it was uh, and, I, and I appreciated those folks from, from coming and sharing it with us. But uh, they weren't all that impressed with, with the prediction model. And I'm talking about the people that were working in the field uh, uh, that have the skill set to do these things. Yeah, so again, I'm going to support that. Mr. Guerra. If that was my concern was going to be that, I think that there's a lot of good things in here that I do support, it without is. a doubt. Um, I, I just want to see it go. That, and I know we have time because the contract hasn't even been accepted for bid, and that still has to come before us before we even approve the new time, but we do have time to send it to committee. So, and I would hate to see it fail, as Ms. Galloway has stated, if it doesn't get the, if it doesn't get postponed, then it might not make it through the, the rest of the vote. So, that's my only opinion on that. So, I would hope we can all support to send this to the committee, and then we have time to get it approved properly before the actual managing firm, if we get a new one coming before us, because that still has to go up for bid, according to Mr. Benzin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Only way this will get supported by me if it was by professionals in such said fields, such as Mr. Benzik, and once again the Marion administration, as well as people like Bill Lustenham that's out in the field that will sign off to where public safety is, is number one. If, if the health community, Ms. Pugh and all of them that's in place to make sure and guarantee public safety, I can't support something on behalf of just going along just to get something passed in a hurry. We got to keep it paramount public safety. As the mayor and the mayor, I know some people will get irritated, but the mayor and administration is adamant about public safety, number one. So when they sign off, I'm on board. Thank you, Ms. Fields. I would like, I would support moving it to special affairs with the presentation. That would give everybody time to read it and uh, make a decision. But it would keep us from being at a stop with the pipe replacement project. Yes, it's going to be bid out, but I think we have time to deal with this and everybody can review it and have a special order, have those doctors here on special affairs. I think that's enough time. Is that the committee you're pointing to postpone it to? Yeah. Which committee? Finance. Which? Finance. Finance. 
What's the advantage of it? Mr. Briggs, you haven't been recognized. Would you like to be recognized? Yeah, you have to be Mr. Briggs. No, I didn't. I'd like to be recognized. Thank you. You have. Okay, what? And Mr. Briggs, this is, you, you, you literally are down the time. This is, you've already, actually, you've already spoken twice. You don't have any more time. Okay, fine. So, thank you. Um, so, just, so, Mr. Davis, you've spoken twice, too. Yes, but point of information. What's your point? Of when we're in committee, this is serious. Mm -hmm. When we're in committee, and as a chairperson of rules committee, by the way, we got to get to the place where when we're in committee, it should not be us spoken twice. Let's get this business done to where we resolve it so when we're all on the council floor, we're not back and forth arguing amongst each other again. Mr. We should Davis, be able to do business back in this committee. Mr. Davis, yes, you are absolutely right. And as the chairperson of the rules committee, since we were elected in 2017, all you have to do if, if none of your colleagues show up and you and whoever you choose show up, change some rules. Bring them to this committee. I mean, to these, and if they don't vote, you know what I'm saying? It can be done. And, and But until we, we're going to beat the horse. That's what we're doing. So, the motion on the floor is... Oh, did you? Oh, you have to. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think um, it needs to be said to, to the group that a lot of these, this resolution that's been brought here is really interfering with what we're doing already with the NRDC, with Dr. Schwartz and Dr. Abernathy. Yes, it is. And, and like I said, we get this, it really lacks the complexity of what we were doing internally. And like I said, you know, you bring something here, you put it on the table, like this is the greatest thing for the city. The problem is, is that we've been working on this since December with the NRDC, with the state, to be able to have a solid um, settlement uh, of some of the, of the things that you have been discussing here tonight. And I want you all to know that. Because, like I said, we are in the trenches on this literally with getting this work done to make sure it's safe, to make sure it's, it meets the health and well-being standards, you know, like I said, for, for the city. And the fact of the matter is, is that hydro backing stopped. And I mentioned this before. All you have to do is go back to the FLIC meetings where the plumber himself was there to talk about issues regarding hydro excavation versus traditional. So, like I said, I, I just, I, I think it's, I, I can't say it enough because of the seriousness of it. This, like I said, this is, this, we have been working on this nonstop. And to put a policy together like this to me is just negligent. And haphazard. So, um, there is a substitute motion on the floor to move this resolution to um, the next finance committee. And so, is, uh, I don't think any of you guys have so, all in favor of supporting that motion say aye. 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 Those that oppose. Aye. So, it moves to special, I mean to um, the next finance committee and for discussion. So, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Fields. I would like to request a special order for Drs. Abernathy and Schwartz to be here at the next <coughs> finance committee. Uh, and anyone else the administration wants here to discuss elements of this policy in terms of the technicalities of it. Thank you. I will order that with the Oh, yep, there's one more, yes. So, one more add-on resolution from Mr. Branch. Yes. We have a, a First Amendment resolution. I'm, I'm sorry, we... Oh, the many copiers confuse me on the staple. Uh -huh. uh, the staple on the bottom. Okay. Uh, 
Well, what you have before you is the budget resolution where we need to revise uh, the MOT budget to include uh, funding, additional funding for the partial salary for the DPW director, as well as purchase some police equipment that they would like to purchase. We had funds in this grant. This grant was issued in 2016. We had $100,000 in there for executive search. We did not use. We went back to the Mott Foundation and request that we repurpose that money, and they did grant that um, to the city of Plymouth to go ahead and utilize that money for this purpose. Any questions? Yeah. Madam Chair? Yes, um, uh, Well, for the same reasons that I heard my fellow council people say they couldn't approve an add-on here tonight, that we need time to review this, I uh, make a motion to postpone this to the next Finance Committee meeting. There's a motion on the floor to postpone this, Ms. Gordon. I second that. I move and second it. Is there any discussion? Yes, I can't support postponing this. This is dry cutting something. Why would you postpone something such as this and you ain't trying to postpone the, something that was just thrown together, so to speak? This here is a uh, child steward, my grant that's already in place. Yes. Well, help me understand postponing this here work to keep people's budget in the city flowing. Please. Well, point of information, didn't you just vote the last vote? Not to postpone. This is you a said you voted no the last vote. Madam Chair, through you. Mr. Chair, I'm not going to tell you I one more time. I information. Okay. Madam Chair, through you. This is not apples and oranges. The other one was kind of spare the moment. I use nice terms, spare the moment. This here is already in place. And the salaries that already was already, I don't know exactly the term, I haven't read it. But we already had voted on them, uh, Mr. Steve. Have we had passed this before a long time ago? The 417000 yes. for 2016. So why would we hold that up? That's what my question was. Mr. Yeah, and, and what he was asking is just a change. When you said that they wouldn't be, I remember receiving this one. Right. I remember the tennis one. And what he's asking is, he's saying that there have been some changes. They went back to Child Stewart Mark to, to get those changes approved. The, uh, the funder said okay. So now why do, why do we need to, to postpone it? Maybe this is comparing out to Mark, uh, in my opinion. So I won't be, I won't be voting for it to, to put some this back to uh, well, I would just say that it's kind of hypocritical to postpone one add-on because you've not had a chance to review it, and then to have a second add-on that's just been placed before us and, and not have time to review it. I think it's hypocritical to say, oh, but we should approve this one but not that one, if, you're, if that was the basis of your reasoning. Yes, the last time. Well, it would be hypocritical if you were comparing apples and apples. But I'm talking about the content thereof. The content there, uh, as it relates to this one, uh, Councilwoman, I understand. I understand it. What you just gave me, there are some issues that I have. Every council member that was a council member and present that night accepted that grant uh, from the Charles Stewart Mock Foundation. And we, back in our archives, and we still have we still have some of the same stuff as to what was approved. It's and all he's asking, I'm sorry? It's all in the package. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And all he's asking is a change. Just a change. So it's, it's not comparing the same thing. It's not being hypocritical, in my opinion. A point of information. Um, may I ask Mr. Branch what the executive search was for? We had, that we're no longer going to do that. We had included funds in there for an executive search for a, a CFO and a, I uh, believe, HR director. Right. Yes. And we did not use those funds for the executive search. So that money sat there. Okay. And um, just, just for the record, 
I'm never going to turn down any money. But I do have a problem with some of these changes. This grant was granted in 2016. So the fact that it's been held over. Mr. Newsom, how long have you been the CFO for the city of Flint? 16 months. So all of 2018 and half of 2017, this grant was accepted according to this in December of 2016. So the fact that we still have $100,000 for an executive search that we knew that we weren't going to do because both of the positions you're speaking of were already taken is a problem for me because it looks like we're just holding a pot of money there on the side. That's just me. I can voice my opinion, and, and, and I'm going to ask that you respect it just like everybody else. The second piece of that is um, who is our grant writer, and, and are they being paid $120,000? I believe in September of last year, 2018, City Council passed a resolution for a one book global to do grant writing for the City of Flint. And I can look up that resolution number. It needed to be. Yes, we did approve a grant writer. Right, but, and, and, and I'll I'll just happened in September of 2018 on the same grant. Again, this this grant was supposed to go through March 31st of 2018. All I'm saying, and, 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 and I appreciate the extra money for the DPW director. Rob, I, I just want to go on the record. The last few meetings that I've asked you questions on record, the responses that I have got is, I can't be everywhere. I can't handle everything. Of which I responded... You are the highest paying DPW director that has been in this community. This is proof of it. Secondly, you are a DPW director that has more PSAs under you, at least since I've been a council person for the last five years. And so with the salary that you're receiving, respectfully, I'm going to ask that your responses change. Because it makes me wonder how did the DPW directors before you that didn't make as much money that didn't have as much support with PSAs. We can smile and look at all we want to, but there is more support staff through PSA, through um, project managers than this community has ever had. All I'm asking you, Mr. Bennett, I'm not looking for an answer for you. I'm, I'm looking at you saying as we, if we, if I approve this, I want those responses from you to change for me. And so I'm going to have more questions, Steve. I can ask those questions offline. I will not stop this from moving at least to council, and I will look to have my questions answered. But I am concerned that there is a pot of money, whether it's grant or not, that is being laid to the side and been, being brought appropriately when it is appropriate for the administration. With that being said, let me see. I don't know who was next. Um, Just from one oh. point in your... Um, mm -hmm. We have list. requested two extensions on this MOP grant. The last extension we requested was in December of 2018. It was granted. Ms. Worthy. Um, so, sorry, I had to go to the bathroom if you already explained this. Does this mean that the DPW director will get paid $154,000 per year? Like, what does this mean? No. It means that his salary was supplemented by Ma to get his money. So his that, pay will that's seventy-seven thousand dollars will be added. This will be utilized for his salary. <coughs> Half of that money. Half of it's already gone. We had seventy-seven thousand, and now it's one hundred and fifty-four thousand. We're asking his his salary oh. update would include his funding would include the MOT money plus the money that's in the general fund or the water fund to supplement it to make his salary that we contracted him So for. he's not getting a raise, it's no, just no. they're helping to pay? No, we had, they provided us with a one-year supplement because, because we could not find an EPW director for the salary that we had for the city oh, of Flint. okay. That's all my questions right now. Mr. Um, uh, yeah, um, I know in regards to the grant writer, can you give me that for how I make pro personally get back with you? Who's specific that is? Because okay, my the resolution number was one eight zero four eight one point one. 
was approved by City Council on 9 24, 2018. How much is it? How much was the uh, the resolution that the, for the grant? $119,950. And that was, uh, did they have the, co they had the company, but is there one, an individual that does one it specifically, or just One Love? One Love Global you, is the company. Okay, and my only concern was that, I know it's, as I spoke to public safety, I know that they have their sergeants and, and fire departments and, and police department writing grants too. I just wanted to know if that grant writer you know, was working not, with them as well. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that. Right, we had a meeting last week with the entire uh, administrative <laughs> staff with the grant writer. And she's working with everybody on that. Okay, so is, can I get, is there a name for the individual, or is it just the... Okay, that's what I want. That could be off. That could be first. Can you repeat okay. that resolution number, please? One eight zero four eight one point one. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Briggs. Uh, on this economic development, a couple of things. Who is it, and what have they done? That's been that money is spent. They for what? use a small. I think that was used for a small business camp. Back in 2017, we contracted with a uh, company out of Detroit, and they provided small business development and a camp for a small business in the city of Tom. Did they do anything? Did we get anything developed? Well, they helped some companies start small businesses. I remember that. Well, no, we're not thinking of Lear. Lear was done by no, 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 Chamber. No, Lear's not a small business. Who was the small business? Yeah. Point of information. Do you remember? Yeah, that we have information on those camps. I think it's been on Facebook. Well, sorry, I just want him to have clarity. Sorry. Are you done? I was just going to I want to hear her answer. The. If I got you don't mind. I yield to Ms. Warden. I've personally been contacted. Oh, that's good. I've personally been contacted by the. Uh, person that ran that, and I've seen it, mm -hmm. and um, all of that. So it was legit. It happened. And they can get you more information. Right. We have a, a contract that was issued through okay. purchasing invoice through the system. Good deal. Um, I maybe it's in this packet. I'm trying to go through it as quickly as I can. But this is a financial recovery technical assistance grant. What is this police equipment for, and how does it fit under that category? We asked SMOT if we can utilize those funds to buy some additional equipment for the police department's um, intelligence center, and they granted it. And it was for some time. I'll have to look up the software that they're trying to purchase, and I can tell you that. But well, I just, I mean, I, I'm just trying to think how police equipment fits under financial recovery technical assistance. I don't know what police software would have to do with financial recovery. It just it doesn't seem to be in the same. So that's why I'm asking. I, I, am I missing a page that explains what that equipment is and what it's meant to do? Is it, is it in this package, Mr. Branch? No, it's not in that package. I'm looking it up right quick. Um, this equipment that they will allow them to basically um, analyze cell phone data to help them solve crimes. It's called a UFED Touch 2 Ultimate includes phone detective, logical, and physical an analyzers. It's two of them are $10,499. Which helps them do what? Soft helps them analyze cell phone data and crime solving activities. And how does that relate to financial technical assistance? It recovery? was requested that the MOC people provide us the funding, and we provided this letter. They asked us what we were going to do with it. We gave them what the police wanted to buy, and they granted us authorization to use it. Well, I guess if the funder agrees with it, right. they did agree you know, with it. that's up to them, but I really don't see. I, I mean, I can think of other things that we could have used for financial uh, recovery technical assistance. But if the funder has no problem with it, ultimately, I guess I wouldn't. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all the favor of sending this to council say aye. That was not aye. Whoa, 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 wait. That was I think motion. the motion was postponed to Finance Committee, correct? Oh, was it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Who made the motion? I did. Oh, yes. we, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so any further discussion on um, postponing? So, all in favor of postponing to the next Finance Committee say aye. Aye. Those that oppose? Aye. Any abstentions? The motion fails. So, is there an original motion? Wait, I was a no vote. I just didn't raise my hand. <coughs> no. You didn't vote no. And so if you don't vote no, and then there's a yes, it's a yes. I, it? I, I believe there was one, one. Miss Fields. Yes. Thank you. And then Mr. Grizz of Saint. All the right. rest was a yes vote, which right. okay. Thank you. causes it to fail. So. Oh, yes. You didn't vote no. So. But that's why you didn't have to raise your hand because the yeses had already gone through. There's a motion to move, Mr. Davis. Madam Chair, I second. To move and second it. Is there any further discussion? A motion to move to council. Mr. Winfrey, supported by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion? All in favor of moving this to council, say aye. Aye. All that opposed? Any abstentions? Moves unanimously. Madam Chair, Ms. I have a referral request. Well, still have some other things. We um, have yeah, not done to... any of the special orders. If we could, if we could postpone those to the next meeting. Well, uh -huh. <coughs> you can do that, but objection. The special orders? Uh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, Ms. Field. Before you do that, I will tell you there is a problem with the RAP program. Okay. Um, you're telling the constituents to call that number. That number is telling them they can't help them take a number, take a name. There's, And I've asked Mr. Newsom and I think Ms. Wheeler. No, yeah. I haven't asked you. No. Well, uh, Amanda, to check into this because is this RAP program going or not? So I would like to hear okay. that special order, but I still would like to make this referral. In between, if I may. Well, can you wait until after we got to the end of when the normally referrals are made? Is that okay? The referrals are made anytime, but I can wait. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, what are you saying that you want to hear from this, them, Ms. Fields? You want them to? Uh, are you waiting on a response? You already well, have. Well, maybe they have an answer. Well, if I may, um, Madam Chair, I think that. I'm hoping that this is what I read is the case. And I don't know if you had a chance to read the response from the Treasurer. Yeah, yeah. So she's saying that there was a, um, I'm going to read it verbatim. So she reached out to G-Card, who's the intermediary, and she got this response from G-Card that they got from Wayne Metro, that they were closed on Monday for the holiday, and Tuesday was a building emergency, which caused the call, the volume, the call volume to shoot off periodically during the day on Tuesday and Wednesday they hit their max threshold for calls which unfortunately triggers the message that was heard. So my hope is, is this was an anomaly because of not just the holiday but also the building um, emergency and we should get back to state to state. Now I have not heard that people have not been getting through before Monday. So this, my hope is, is this was a one time thing because of let's call it his law. You have the holiday and then right after you have the building emergency. Obviously, maybe because of what? Mayor, yeah. Okay, well, I hope it's an anomaly, too, because, you know, we're being told to tell people there's this low-income assistance program mm -hmm. called RAP. Yes, and we look pretty stupid mm -hmm. when we refer them to RAP and nobody picks up the phone right. or, you know, they uh, whatever, they can't get a hold of anybody. So I had complaints before the Monday holiday, okay, <laughs> that, and I don't know what their call threshold is per day, but I would suggest we need to find that out and maybe do some tweaking on this program because we all look stupid. If you're telling us to tell people to tell them, and that's what happens, I, it doesn't make us look too effective. And, and, and I'll, I'll have a conversation with uh, my, the, context of, the context of Wayne Metro because that's where the call volume is. But uh, you know, in, in anticipation of this, I did pull the latest numbers. And you know, people are getting in the queue as of the 18th was the last time that they recorded a call 
for them to begin processing on. And a total of 1,112 um, different uh, residents have have asked to be considered. Um, and I, I want to share yet, so I want to make sure that the number's right, how many people have been able to get through the process. And some people are getting through the process. Some people aren't getting through the process because it's taking some time, because it's a large volume of people going through. Some people aren't getting through the process because it's taking the time to get paperwork together. So I don't want to share that yet. But um, based on these numbers, it looks like you know people are able to get a case open, um, if you will, um, on their behalf so they can be reviewed and um, by GCAR. For income, for income availability or verification. Okay, so, and, and, and then the last thing, and I will keep you apprised if I get more of these complaints, but so does the RAP program now include that extra money from GLEWA for their low income assistance? So and I think you covered that once, but I don't remember what the answer was. Two pots of money. GLEWA originally said, what, 117000 They upped that to about a, up by about a half a million dollars by board vote. And on August 31st of last year. So there, now I think what you're talking about is an additional pot of money that doesn't go through Wayne Metro. We had talked about the grand bargain that um, three quarters of a million dollars, six hundred thirty-three thousand dollars it depends on the perspective. That's still on hold. What I, what I did is I took feedback from this body and I shared it with, uh, I've shared it with DEQ, who is the, let's say the fiduciary over that money in which they're trying to put together as a grant. I shared the feedback from this body the last time this was a discussion item, I think in November, and we're trying to work together to figure out there's a way to appease both parties. I sent them communication. Oh, she's not looking at me. I sent them communication, I think, as early as, I'm sorry, as late as the first week of January when we had that counter proposal. And I'm, I need to sit down with the parties at the EQ to kind of figure out if that counter proposal will work so I can share it. I know Council, I'm looking at Council Winfrey, I'm going to be very concerned about this as well as Council for Mays, who isn't here. So what my strategy has been to try and figure out some way to appease both parties because you know, just a little bit of background in case you forgot. Yeah, I think Councilman Winfrey and Councilman Mays communicated that there was an expectation of how that money was going to be used. Um, and DQ is saying that that's not, that wasn't their understanding or expectation. So I've been trying to work to figure out if there's some way to get a piece of the parts of the before and get it over. Well, I don't know if there's anything we can do here, but, you know, that vote on the Gleewa thing, and, you know, which uh, was a pretty bad vote, in my opinion, to begin with, uh, it's quite clear that these conditions that many of council who voted the majority to accept that I have been totally disregarded and I knew at the time and said at the time they were unenforceable and now here we are two years later and we still don't have access to the kind of promised money for low income assistance. It's it's really, I think, a disgrace. Well, uh, I, and I understand your frustration. I mean, I'm embarrassed that it's taken this long. It's probably, you know, we still have a few more rounds to go. I believe I've worked given them many a weekend to try and put analyses together that um, I thought would appease both parties are trying I'm trying again. So, you know, unfortunately, you know unfortunately what was discussed <laughs> the parties that discussed it are no longer in in, posi in positions in, in their former position. So that's really all I can say. The money's there, it's just a matter of coming to some sort of agreement of how to use it. So Okay, and one one last question. I just don't get how M DEQ is the decider. How did MDEQ get in the middle of this LIWA agreement? No, remember that was money that was promised by the state to um, to support Flint for water bill assistance. Read the resolution. It specifically says the state will provide X amount of dollars um, as part of the deal. LIWA was not supposed to provide that balance. So it was an original amount by LIWA and then an additional amount by the state. So that's how the state got involved. Promise is broken. I'm just amazed. Okay, thank you. They haven't broken them yet, Ms. Field. We're still working. So, um, are are we leaving these same special orders on for the next community? Okay. So we'll do that without objection. Um, I make a motion that we postpone discussion. Later. There's a motion to dis Mr. Winfrey, there's a motion to postpone discussion item. Sure, I second the motion. Mr. Winfrey has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those that oppose.
Those discussion items are postponed. Ms. Fields, you had a... Um... Yes, I have a referral request, and rather than read the whole thing, I've already talked to Mr. Uh, Newsom to let him know this is coming, that I put it in kind of written format, and I will give one to the recording secretary. But basically, I'm requesting two reports, okay? One is regarding all funding utilized for service line replacement program. I want a cohesive, understandable report from the beginning of the project to current. And I won't go down each bullet point, but that's what I have here about the specific information I want in this full report. And then B, I'd like a report on the, uh, in the wind plan, the local capacity development line item. I've not been able to find my copy of the original wind plan. I don't know if this was in some amended wind plan, but I want a full report of both the narrative of the intended use and how it has been used with all financial details. So I will give this to Mr. Newsom, who has part of this, and, and to the recording secretary as well. I have a referral of my own, Mr. Newsom, um, and, and the promises broken reminded me of the referral I've been wanting to um, get in heaven. Um, it was announced that General Motors was back on the Flint water. Um, what my referral is, last that was being discussed, General Motors was saying that the city of 1.2 million. And so I would like to know how that 1.2 million um, was settled between the city and General Motors and its impact or and or not impact on them returning to the city of Flint water line. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So do you give it a referral? To I gotta give it to Jennifer. So Jennifer? Janelle. Janelle. <laughs> it's late, y'all. I'm sorry. You don't look like Jennifer, just for the record. Thank All you. of y'all don't look alike. <laughs> um, I, I did a referral. Um, General Motors, it was announced that General Motors was back on the Flint water line. Um, and it was also um, said that the city of Flint owed General Motors maybe $1.2 million. And so my referral is I want to know how that $1.2 million was settled between the city of Flint and General Motors and or whether it um, ha had any involvement with the General Motors coming back onto the Flint water source. Okay? Okay. Um, that is all I have. Is there anybody? Mr. Winfrey? Yes, sir. Most to adjourn. Most to adjourn. Mr. Briggs? Second. There's a um, second. All in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. Aye. Those that oppose, the meeting is adjourned. I'd like to call the legislative uh, committee um, to order. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Do we need another roll call? Or no? No, 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 we don't. Um, Mr. Garrett, did you second that adjournment? Uh, no, Mr. Did. Griggs. Mr. Griggs, yeah. Okay. And now you're starting legislative? Yes. Okay. Yes. Got I'm, on, I'm on your record page. Did um, Ms. Fields have an addition oh. to this? Because she's not in here. To the to the yeah agenda. Uh, no. Okay, because I thought she had. All right, so we, Miss um, Hocat. I don't know if you're here to talk about the medical marijuana, um, or if we are. Just have no one here for that. I am, I am not here. I'm going to hear. Um, <laughs> she's got the medical um, I'm not here to speak about that. Um, I don't know if um, you were still requesting a special order. Yes. Yes. I would. Um, I would encourage Shani um, Erickson to be here to talk about that. Um, if you're looking just for an update on applications or process from the current medical marijuana, I can give you that. Otherwise, more detail. Um, uh, yeah, I think we need to speak with or have someone present from the legal office because don't we have to say yes or no or opt in or out? Or so that's for recreation. Oh, not medical. medical. You're talking about medical and you're just no. I'm, this was supposed to be recreational. So there is another special order on the agenda for recreational marijuana as Where's well. Um, I think it's further down. I saw I saw two, uh, it might be a referral. I saw two different ones. One no, I think this was supposed to be changed to recreation. Oh, okay. And it just never got changed. Okay. So if we can have it read next time. Yeah, you can, you can have it read next time and talk about that.
Okay, because I know... Um, you want that changed to recreational. Yes, please. Recreational. And then if uh, we can... And Reed will show up next time. So we'll just postpone it to the next committee. Okay. So there's no objections. No. All right, thank you. Um, we're on to resolutions. What is the pleasure? Um, Mr... Yes, I uh, move the uh, uh, we move one eight zero five nine zero one eight zero five nine one and one eight zero one nine zero zero eleven to the council. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Graves, seconded. Yeah. Any discussion? Okay. There's no discussion. All those in favor of moving this to council. Say aye. 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 Any nays? Abstentions? Okay. Mr. Um, Guerra. Oh, sorry. Okay, the next one is the CWAC ordinance, and I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, this continued to be on here because I think you were trying to find out if the ordinance that was passed by council a couple of years ago was still mm -hmm. in effect. Mm -hmm. And then... Yesterday we received another copy. Oh, we received a copy. Uh, yeah, and I wasn't I was, sure what that was. Um, I'm not going to recognize. No, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So the the question there were two referrals that went out, and I explained it in here before. Explained to Councilwoman Fields. I sent out the the referral. So that was a separate thing. With regard to what's on the agenda now and the revision. With regard to CWAC, that was from the last meeting that we had. She asked for the revision, and that's what's in here is the revision that she requested with regard to including reprogrammed uh, funding. So is that different than what was on the agenda before? Well, yes, it's different because we made the one change that was requested. And then they should get a copy. I wasn't sure. And that was sent over to you guys' this is office, so, yeah. Yeah, yesterday. Um, is there any motion? Or I'm sure. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. No, no, you go ahead. I know. Okay. We'll get it for you. Okay. I, I uh, recommend that we move 180523 to count. There's the motion made, oh, Mr. Griggs. Mr. Griggs, Mr. Griggs second it. I know you're moving around. Okay, good. Um, Mr. Winfrey made the motion to this both to council. Okay. Mr. Garrett second. No. Oh, Mr. Griggs did. Mr. Griggs did. Okay. Then Mr. Griggs Sorry. Um, discussion? She's fine. Oh, sorry. If I could, what she's passing out will become a point one on the one eight zero five two three regarding the uh, CWAC. I guess all the changes in the you didn't make that motion? I know. Motion's been made. Oh, we need to make a motion to make this. Yes. Yeah. Right, well, Mr. Guerra? To make a motion to make a substitute motion to make that a point one. Thank you. Uh, motion's been made. For support. Mr. Winfrey supports. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. <coughs> aye. Any nays? Okay, so that brings us back to the vote to send it to council. Uh, any discussion? No. I, I do have a question. <clears throat> Ms. Wilcox, you know about this. That's okay. What was the change? Can I, we've had I so much going on. Um, we have so much going on. I have not kept up with this one. The first, the first page, go to subsection 226, the second paragraph, to include... The review of reprogramming funds. Two second here. Right here? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of moving this to council, say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, so it passes. Okay, so his original motion was to send both of them, so you just sent both of them. Oh, well, we just yes. sent both. Yeah. Oops. Okay, let's do that. Wait a second. I wasn't ready. Why is all... <laughs> I was not ready for that. All right, Mr. Guerra. All, 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 all
Yeah. 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 Y
Briggs? Yes. Swerving. Yes. So the seven is not going to be the complaints that they're not restoring and you know understanding that it's this kind of weather and they can't replace asphalt for example or I think uh, replace concrete sidewalks or whatever mm -hmm. um, you know I just wanted to know because even before the weather got this bad the road restoration wasn't occurring so we had originally given asked me I don't know something three million plus contract we reduced it by resolution of 1.1 million and I I can't get any response. I mean, I don't know if they have any intentions of doing road restoration. Um, so I don't think that contract or that bid worked out very well for us. And I was told informally that the reason was because they didn't have the capacity to do the work. So I don't know why we gave them that contract. And that's a lot of money sitting there that we ought to consider discussing moving to someone else who is actually doing restoration. And um, so Ashmi and Zito are still sitting there on money that was not used, but their contracts are now over? Um, I don't know the exact number, but that is correct. They did not fully exhaust their POs. However, um, because that money is fully dedicated to working on Fast Start, you know, service on a place where we can't use that money for you know, City of Flint operations, for instance, what will eventually happen is we'll close out that part of phase four and use that bucket of money um, for um, the continuation of phase six. So we will reapply. Similar to what we did, we will recall we reduce those contracts in order to give GoYet money. So we'll do something like that with that unused portion contingent upon the language that's in the dwarf loan, remember 40 million, or the pasture settlement or chip fund. Any of those buckets will be what we'll use. Well, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. We're going to then bid out road restoration work again. We always have. We, we, we so, well, I would hope that while the bad weather is going on, we're doing that work of soliciting bids well, so that we are ready to go when good weather's here because constituents are really unhappy well, uh, about so, the rate of restoration. So let's back up a minute. Phase 5 is already getting awarded, um, and that's, that is trailing Phase 5 replacement. But 4 so, wasn't completed. Four, well, 
we need to have a discussion about that because we have, according to the records that I have, phase four is completed. So if there's something that was undone, that's something that that DPW would need to, that would be to be reported to DPW, and then we have to have a discussion on that. But according to uh, according to my according to my understanding, the work is done. There's specific addresses that were supposed to be done as part of phase four that was assigned to either Zeta or ASCII and that wasn't done, then that, you know, obviously we need to be alerted of that. And we need to go through the proper channels. I well, I think that's a quality problem as opposed to the new scope of service. We I think if we out. issued a press release saying, was your road restoration completed, mm -hmm. we'd get a few emails. Well, I mean, we, we're creeping outside of finances purview. Um, although, per, you know, purchasing does, purchasing does fall into me, but it does require intervention with DPW in order for us to address quality issues. So, uh, you know, that's something that DPW and finance have to work on with legal to figure out exactly what's going on if there are if there are quality issues and how to resolve those. Okay, well, I, I guess this is going to come up again. I just hope you're getting ready to do another bid and these kind of discussions do occur because I, I don't know about other council people, but I'm still getting calls, people complaining that restoration work from the pipes were replaced last July have not been completed. Lots of calls. Well, I mean, that's something that we, you know, we say seriously want to understand, though. Um, but again, that's not a new bid. We've already bid our phase five, and we haven't bid our phase six, seven, one replacement work. So I think it's a map more matter of addressing uh, work that was supposed to be done as opposed to new work. Do you want to keep that on there for Mr. Bentley? Yes. Okay, please. we'll leave that special uh, order on there as well. Uh, what is this body's pleasure with the resolution? I'll make a motion. Madam uh, Galloway. For postponement of 180627. Uh, is there a second? Uh, Mr. Davis. All those, any discussion? All those in Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Nays. Abstentions. The ayes have it. Mr. Six. Uh, six zero. Oh. Oh. And then Miss Dan Galloway. Mm -hmm. Or Miss Bills. Uh, is it the proper time now? Can I move more resolutions? Yes. Okay. I'd like to move resolution one nine zero zero nine, one nine zero zero one zero, one nine zero zero one seven, to council. Is there a sentence, Mr. Davis? Mr. Garson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Nays. Abstentions. Uh, uh, that's uh, six, six and oh, Janelle. Miss Galloway. Uh, six, so six oh, for one. I make a motion that we postpone discussion items. Is it a motion? Is there a second? Support. Been properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any nays? Any abstentions? That passes. That passes for postponement with a 6 to 0. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. There's a second. Ms. Davis, Ms. Grosser. There's been a second. All in favor for adjournment, say aye. Aye. Ms. Davis, any abstentions? We are adjourned. I'd like to bring legislative, not legislative, I'm sorry, we've done. I'd like to bring grants to make an order, please. Mr. Chair. Are there any other uh, additions or changes to the, uh, uh, to the uh, agenda? Hearing none. Mr. Chair. Council. Make a motion that we send 190013 and 190014 to council. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to send 190013, 190014 to council. Is there a second, Councilman Davis? Mr. President, I said. And both of these are changeovers. Okay. okay. Is there any discussion? I'd like to clear this. Okay. On, can you. <laughs> so, what are these properties? So, these are for several properties. They include three Smith Village properties as well as two NSP1 properties. Um, EMR Construction is the contractor that holds, um, holds the contract for these properties. So, all three of the Smith Village properties have purchase agreements on them. This is the final work. 
um, to get this work done. We expect to close on these properties before the end of February. How long have the purchase agreements been on these properties? Uh, I can't speak to that. That's something I could get to. I don't know that offhand. Okay. I would like to. Um, I would like to know. And so I won't hold these up, but I would like to know them before the meeting on Monday. Sure. And the reason why is because I just want to go on the record again. We're spending a lot of money on Smith Village houses, and I have realtors and brokers that have said that they've had purchase agreements on some of these houses, and it takes forever mm -hmm. for these to get done. And so if the closing could happen before, we wouldn't be... And, and what I would like to do a referral, Suzanne, I would like to know how much money has been put into these properties in, let's just say, in the last 2018. And the reason why I say that is because we, pay, we had a nice little contract for security mm -hmm. for these properties. So the fact that we're paying money to fix them up, we had a nice contract for security, mm -hmm. makes me wonder what did we pay for security for because what I found from people that live over there is security is there when they're there, not there when the vandal vandalization or whatever you want to call it happens. Mm -hmm. So those are the questions that I'll want to answer for myself. I'll email you sure. um, before my vote on I can do that. Oh, you're going to just email her and yeah, I'm not involved. Yeah, no, you don't have to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are, is this the same thing with this second resolution? Yes, there's two. Um, the first one you can see is 1318 Westmore and 1414 Westmore. Those are the two NFT1 properties. The second one is for three single family Smith Village. So they're just broken down by the contract, um, the, the homes that the contractor holds. Okay. So first is NFP1, second is Smith Village. No, you know what? I probably should have it on the record. I just okay. want, I want to know the, re the repairs. And what the address is and, and the purchase agreements. How long the purchase agreements have been on? Five properties talked yep. about in these two yep. resolutions. Yes, ma'am. And then in the resolutions, the new council on the field is going to have a floor, but I think they've been vandalized. Which they have. Awesome. This is the reason that they are on, right. that this change order exists. Yeah. So. Well, I was going to ask a question, but you probably can't really answer it based on because this work is needed because of the. I was going to say. Do you promise this is the last of your money? <laughs> I can never oh, promise gosh, that. Your heart, you no, I cannot do that. But I will say that um, <laughs> these purchase agreements are the closings are actually um, very close to being set, and they will. Um, we have three homes left in Smith Village to sell. This is it, and we are expecting all three of them to close in February. May I ask one of the questions? Um, this isn't Smith Valley specific to these resolutions, but it's kind of timely now. Could you give us a quick update? Those seven properties that they pulled out of the land bank, they, because I had to go for it, um, are they still an obligation on the city's books, or have they been transferred to them? Um, to my knowledge, they have not been transferred. There's actually they just postponed. Yeah. Oh, it is? Yep. Sorry. Yep. Okay. Didn't know it was tired. Okay. Cool. Okay, so just read the last line. Since CDBG funds cannot be used again on the same property, the money will come from planning and development general funds. That's correct. And so, so one of them is for twenty four thousand five fifty seven. Mm -hmm. The other one is for twenty seven five fifty six. So we're looking at a total of about fifty two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You guys had that budgeted. We requested last year um, a budget of $218,000, so of that money is in our professional services line item. And I just want, I wanted that to be on the record. It's on the record. Mr. Winfrey, I wasn't done. Because when we tried to allocate <coughs> funds for things that we <coughs> felt were going to be an asset to this community, we couldn't. And so now here we hear that CDBG funds have already been exhausted on these properties. And now we have to go into general fund dollars where we can't move for police officers to fix properties so that they can be sold. And so I just want that on the record. Thank you so much for being patient with me. I'm all done. Any other discussion? All in favor of moving these counts, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All the same. So, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that um, we postpone all outstanding <laughs> items. There is a motion on the floor. I second that motion. There is a second that we postpone all outstanding items.
discussion on that numbers. All in favor of postponing, please signify by second aye. Aye. All the same side. Mr. Chair. Councilman. I make a motion that we adjourn. There's a motion. Whoa. Okay. Second that motion, there's a motion, there's a second. Look. All in favor, be signified by saying aye. Come on, aye. Let's go to the restaurant. Aye, aye.